Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sound of Collaboration podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Wheeler. First, I want to start by saying that we hope that our listenership and everyone viewing uh, out there today is doing well, that you're practicing social distancing, wearing masks. We have ours on here, uh, but we are also making sure that we are at least six feet apart during the course of this conversation, and we're also outside as well, too. Uh, so make sure that you're taking care and taking precautions during this time. We know that it's really important to, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to protect not only ourselves, but those around us. First, I also want to make sure that we give a shout out to Montgomery Parks and Brookside Gardens for allowing for us to film here. Again, thank you all. It's an amazing space. If you have not had the opportunity to visit, please do take some time out and visit Brookside Gardens. It's wonderful. The animals are out, the birds are chirping, the butterflies are flying just a wonderful place to be in. But with all that being said, we want to thank you all again for joining us today on the Sound of Collaboration podcast. I have some very, very wonderful and exciting guests that I'm here with today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but I'm excited about this conversation and hearing their perspectives around what's happening currently in Montgomery County. Hi, I'm Daniela Perez. I'm a rising senior at Northwest High School and an active leader in the Minority Scholars Program. Hi, I'm Renoir Dawson Fine and a recent graduate of Kennedy High School. I'm 19 and I'm a board member of the MoCo Pride Center. Hi, I'm Sasha Toledo Padilla. I'm a rising senior at Northwest High School. I'm a finalist for DECA, which is a business competition. Peace and blessings, Sadiq Ali, a proud executive director of Maryland Mentor. And as the young people here call me, uh, the cool uncle, I will take that because at least it's cool. I'm just really excited about today's conversation. So now that you know who's joining us here today, let's get started, shall we? So I want to open up the conversation by asking you all how you feel in this moment. I think we've seen some unprecedented things taking place nationally. Uh, obviously, we have the pandemic as it currently is uh, here for us set against the backdrop of national unrest when it comes to race relations. So I think it's really important to hear from you all around what your aspirations may be as current uh, high school attendees or recent graduates, as well as some of the anxieties that you may have as well too during this time. So with that being said, I want to kind of open it up. Feel free to, to share with us what you feel right now in this moment. In the current political climate, it's definitely a time to feel empowered seeing leaders um, step up to the table. However, I think it's fair to acknowledge that a lot of us feel stuck. Um, you're starting to question your role. Um, what can I do during this pandemic? What should I not do? Yesterday, we got the news that first semester will be online for MCPS students. And, you know, what does that mean for a lot of students? Does that mean that they're missing out on scholarship opportunities, senior nights, events that they've been waiting for, a senior experience? Um, that's something I really took to heart, but I think we're starting new ways to discover how can we keep this family and keep moving forward, whether that means virtual town halls or organizing a protest like the one on Thursday at Diamond Farms, uh, organized by Gaithersburg students. Um, so it's a learning process, but something we can all get through. So yeah, definitely the political stand of view, it's definitely a change which should not be taken lightly. It's something that should be seen as protest, youth voices should be heard, and definitely different point of views. As a first generation Mexican student, I've seen from my stand of view that my black friends and my black uh, community have been affected in the type of way that I feel like I can understand. And I feel like I, as a Mexican student, as a Mexican daughter, I should go and help out my other family members. So I think in this time, mostly I'm a bit cautious and contemplative. Uh, cautious mostly because, well, it's a time to be cautious, a uh, time to be watchful of who you associate with and how, not just in terms of the pandemic, but also in terms of people's intentions, because I think it's a time for where a lot of people's intentions, which may not have been clear before, really are being uh, clarified now by which side of the issue they fall on and the reasons for it. Um, but I'm also cautious because it's no secret that especially in this country and to some extent in this county, but less so, we have a tendency to just sort of make the best of a bad situation by settling into it. And I really hope that that doesn't happen. That I, I hope sincerely that the push for reform and the push for change is taken into the best and most productive ways and not necessarily always the most outrageous ways or the most feel-good ways. And I hope that the hype continues. 
If I may add on to what Ren said, I think we're all learning how to hold people accountable. It's a learning process for most of the youth going on. Um, when you have an adult saying, you can count on me or here's my number, how do we use those resources to bring the change that we want to see? How do we get our voices with their power? Um, holding your elected officials accountable um, at 16, going to register to vote. At 17, you can vote in local elections. Um, but communicating with those people that said, here's my number, or I stand for this cause, holding them accountable and learning, how can we work with you? Okay, so yeah, based off of what Daniela and Renwall said, I totally agree. And I think that as a student and as a person who really stands for this um, change, I think that we should be able to stand up for ourselves if no one else is standing for it. If you have a different point of view and you don't agree with this type of way, you should stand up, even if it's not what everyone else is um, thinking of. But technically, and yes, people are creating the protest and are doing this and that, but there's things that you might do, like do things with family, because family members can't really go to the protest because of their children, and we both can do some type of talk or something like that, which can include everyone. But yeah, I think it's really important that everyone has a say and everyone is taken accountable, as Daniela said. And I think it's a really good thing that's happening right now. 2020 may be difficult and maybe a change, but it's definitely a year to think and ponder about. Man, I'm, I'm already enjoying this conversation so much. And I think a couple of the points that have been brought up, I think are really, really critical to underscore. and really to Danny and, and Sasha's point around this idea of uh, youth voice. But I think as, as adults, many times we suffer acutely from adultism in a variety of spaces. We're talking education and what goes on around young people. And I think it's really a great opportunity for us as adults um, and, and as we call ourselves allies of young people to take a look uh, really at youth voice at a deeper level um, and, and, and for us to really rally around the idea that it's not enough to just bring a group of young people together and ask them what they think when in reality the plan has already been set and we're just bringing them in for a dog and pony show just to show like hey we're bringing in some young people but uh, really going deeper with this concept of youth voice and saying what does what does it look like to bring young people in and share power with those young people to share decision making with those young people to really share um, the idea of accountability for those plans, the execution of those plans, so on and so forth. I think we'll see much greater results and, and ultimately much longer term buy-in from young leaders like these that not only have uh, thoughts on the current climate, but they have ideas on how we can continue to shift things. I think we got to go deeper with that. I appreciate that feedback, Sadiq, and that's something that I picked up on too. So with that being said, I want to pivot over to, to Danny and Sasha. Uh, considering the fact that you all are still currently MCPS students, you know, the question that I would have for you is the decision that was just made uh, yesterday by MCPS to close school and only have it virtually through uh, January of next year. Do you feel when we start talking about the amplification of youth voice that MCPS did enough of a good job in reaching out to you all through surveys, conversations or anything like that to get student feedback? around some of the decisions that they've been making and continue to make to this day that directly impact your educational careers? That's a great question. When we talk about MCPS reaching to the students, I feel that they reach out to the same pool of students, whether that's MCR, SGA, or the leaders. And they're not an accurate representation of the entirety of MCPS. So when they say they conducted a survey, they conducted a survey to the parents. And when they engage in these conversations with the students, it's those who are able to be leaders, those who are already in higher positions in the MCPRs and they have their own counsel. Um, and I think you have a large disconnect. For example, um, safety comes first. So if we need to be out until January, so be it. However, will it be best to conduct seven classes at one time during these long periods? Or will it be more beneficial to have it broken down into sections so we have two or three classes to manage? Um, it all gets lost in the virtual space that we're in right now. So um, I think w the real question is, who are they asking? Not just what students, 
because they may not be an accurate representation of MCPS as a whole. You know, they love to boast and brag about their diversity and inclusion, but it's such a small percentage when they do it. And, you know, they reach out to the students, and when you take a deeper look, it's not reflecting what MCPS really is. Yeah, so as Daniela said, they are asking a certain group of students, and myself, I'm, inc I'm very inclusive in my school. I'm very known in my school, like I'm in a lot of clubs and stuff, and I haven't heard anything. Um, I know that the SMOB member, he posted something on Instagram, and students like voted on the comment section, but nothing was done. Like He never said, like, oh, thank you for that, or whatever it was. And yeah, um, it would be nice to have given a survey at, to students and the parents. I know the parents did receive one, and that was cool. But it's from their standpoint, and they're not, they're already older, and it's our graduation year it's for, uh, as well as for all the other students. They don't understand that, yes, it's, sa it's, it's a safety reason. Definitely, it's, it's right that it should be virtually, but it, sh it should be come into consideration that there's a lot of different needs and programs that are very useful for other students, and that's the way that they communicate with people. That's how they express themselves and it's really sad to see that those are not going to be used so much and right now I'm taking a leadership class and I've seen that a lot of students have come to those classes because they're bored at home virtually it's not going to do much like yeah we're taking classes online but it's not like we're communicating with the teachers like one-on-one -on -one. we're not talking to the students with that environment you know it's kind of missing so I wish that they would have had asked the whole group of the MCPS student membership. And going back to what you said, I think as Latinas, I think it's super important to speak up on the fact that when they're reaching out to these parents, how are you reaching out to these parents? Um, some parents, the reality is they're going to need their message translated. Um, some of them may not have an email, check an email. Um, if they do, it might be for certain accounts. And so the responsibility is back on the student that is not getting the information overlapped to them. Um, not every student wants to come home and translate it. Maybe some of them can't and they have that barrier. Um, so when you look back at it, take a step back, what parents are they involving as well as the students? And I think teachers have an important voice to them. I think some of them feel that they're babysitters to us now because you have parents demanding, oh, they have to be back in class. But what resources do the teachers need to conduct their class? My mom only speaks Spanish, so I understand when she's talking about the translation and all of that. My mom, I'm pretty sure she hasn't even heard about the, the survey. Um, it is a bit depressing to see that she's not taken into account, and she doesn't really understand what's going on. She knows that it's going to be virtually, but that's all we, she knows. And I know it's also part of my job to tell her exactly what's going on, but, you know, it should be like teachers should communicate with them. They should have emails going with them, not only for Spanish-speaking um parents but as well as all the other communities because I know that there's a lot of students a lot especially at my church I know people younger students than I do their parents don't even know they come to me to know what's exactly is going on and it's like wow like you don't like you really don't know anything what's going on it's like this the MCPS is doing nothing to solve this and it's been going on for years not only here but back in Wisconsin where I used to go to school and it's just sad to see that I'm 17. It's been 17 years when I've been translating papers. I've been doing my own paper, my online forms, everything. So it's sad to see that they're not taking into consideration every single culture, everything, whatever's going on. So I wish that was a change. 